Psalms 34 says, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praises shall continuously be in my mouth. My soul shall make a boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Then it goes on to say, oh, that, but magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. Let's take a moment to exalt his name. Let's exalt him for his goodness. Let's exalt him for his greatness. Let's exalt him for his kind. Let's exalt him for his love. Let's exalt him because he is God. Let's exalt him by lifting our hands. Let's exalt him by lifting his, our hands. Let's exalt him by cleaving him a praise. Let's say hallelujah. Hallelujah. We magnify your name. We exalt you right now. We exalt you right now, God. We bless you and we love you. We love you because you are a great God. How great is our God? How great is our God? Sing with me. How great is our God. How many of you know that we serve a great God on today? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How great is our God. Come on and celebrate them. Continue to lift them up. Let's say, oh, 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 Say how great, how great is our God. Sing with me, how great is our God. Oh, we'll see how great, how great is our God. All right, everyone. I lift my hands, I lift my hands, I lift my hands.
God is great. Would you go ahead and lift your hands in the spirit of worship? If you know that God is amazing, would you go ahead and give your Savior some praise on this Sunday? For God, you are great. For God, you are great. For God, you are great. Hallelujah, God. For we know you for ourselves, Lord, and because we know you, God, we lift up a praise of worship, God. For giving us the breath of life, oh God, you are great. On this Sunday, God, as we woke up, oh Lord, a day that we have never seen, oh God, it will be a day that we will never see again, oh God, and so we declare how great is our God. And I'm convinced that when the songwriter wrote that, he did it so that you could reflect on just how good your God is. That when you think of the goodness of Jesus, that's all that he has done for you, your soul ought to cry out, hallelujah, God. For you are great, and because of that, God, we praise you, God. We will praise you, God. We will praise you, Lord. 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 With the spirit of thanksgiving, oh God. With the spirit of praise, oh God. With the spirit of thanksgiving, oh God. Oh God, we love you today, oh God. in your hand, oh God, calling us wonderful, calling us to be made in the image of your son, Jesus, who we know to be the Christ. Father God, this, this, oh God, is the day that you have made. And because of that, oh God, we choose to rejoice. Making that decision, oh God, should be an easy one for us, oh God. For when we consider what you brought us through this week, the prayers that you've answered, the doors that you've opened, the ways that you've made, oh God, you've shown yourself mighty. You've showed yourself strong. You've showed yourself faithful to us, oh God. For your goodness and your mercy. For your kindness, Lord, toward us. Father God, we just came by to say thank you. Thank you, God. We came by, oh God, to give you just a portion of what you've given to us. 
Father God, see your servants on this morning where we are, O oh Lord. Search, O oh God, the depths of our spirits, O oh God, and be pleased with what you see. And Father God, if there is anything that is unlike you, anything, O oh God, that would hinder the spirit of worship on today, cast it out, O oh God. In the name of Jesus. Anything, oh God, that would take our eyes off of you. That would get in the way of God, of a memory of how good you've been. Take it away, oh God. Have thine own way. You are welcome in this place. In whatever virtual space we are in, oh God, you are welcome. Holy Spirit, grace divine, come now. Fill this space with your presence, oh God, so much so that we won't be the same as we were when we came in. Oh, yes. Stretch us, oh God, and make us new. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Amen.
your spirit is on this day. I don't know what your week looked like. I don't know what you're battling. I don't know what you're thinking. But I come by to let you know that if your feet are weary, if you feel tired, if you just feel through, you serve a God who's brought your ancestors through it before. And I promise you that same God will show up right in the nick. Do I have a witness on this morning that will testify that I serve a God that sees beyond my faults and gives me everything that I need? That I, I serve a God whose wings I can fly up under and will keep me protected. I mean, I serve a God that shows up in the midst of chaos. I, I serve a God that keeps me in my right mind. I, I serve a God that literally holds me together. I mean, is that your testimony on today? I mean, God. Father God, thank you for keeping our feet steady, oh God. For showing yourself mighty, oh God. For remembering our names, Lord. For remembering our testimony, oh God. For bringing us, oh God, over through and under some things, oh God. I mean, you are just so faithful, Lord. That song says, how great is our God. Oh, yes. Our God is so great that we can't even wrap our minds around you, Father. Yeah. You are so mighty, so great, oh God, that there aren't enough words to describe just how good you are to us, oh God. So we lift our hands, Lord. We give you the only thing that we know can be sufficient, oh Lord, and that is our praise and our worship, oh God. Sometimes we can't even put words to it, oh God. We just have to prostrate ourselves. Yes. And just give you a hallelujah. A thank you, Jesus. A yes, Lord. A have thine own way. A if you don't do it, oh God, it won't get done. Father God, thank you, Jesus. I pray. That wherever you are, you feel the spirit of the Lord. Because where the spirit of the Lord is, oh, yes. there is one true church, holy and apostolic, in whose holy faith let us sincerely and reverently, saints, declare by the use of the Apostles' Creed, say this like you believe it. I believe in God the Father Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, and, and Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. But the third day he rose from the dead. There ought to be some celebration in your voice right there. And, and he ascended into heaven. And he sitteth on the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. And from thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of our sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen, God. Father God, we believe in the Holy Ghost. Oh, yes. The one, oh God, that was sent after Christ ascended into heaven. We believe in that Holy Ghost that changes tongues, oh God. Changes behaviors, Lord. Changes the atmosphere. We believe in the Holy Jesus. Ghost. We believe, oh God, that you forgive us for our sins. We believe, oh God, oh, yes. that any man who is in Christ, he is behold a new creature. We believe that you don't call us based upon who we used to be and what we used to do because you forgive us, God, for our sins. We believe, oh God, that you rose from the dead. 
We believe in that resurrected body of Jesus. We believe in that. And we believe in life, oh God. Everlasting. Amen. I love the Apostles' Creed. I've grown to appreciate it a lot more because usually in church, if you've been there so long, it just becomes a part of the program. But when you really read what it says, you're making a declaration about where you stand when it comes to Christ. We are grateful for the presence of God on this Sunday, wherever you may be. Welcome back to the spirit of praise and worship. We are grateful for you. We are grateful for your family. We are grateful that God has been a keeper, that God has been a deliverer, a way maker, a refiner, that God is giving us a new day to do something new, to do something different, to think differently, to praise and worship him differently to understand him better by and by. If you have your Bibles, would you turn with me to the book of Romans? Romans chapter 8, beginning at verse 24. I'll be reading from the King James Version. Feel free to use whatever version you prefer. Romans chapter 28, beginning at verse 24, and the word of God reads this way. For we are saved by hope, but hope that is seen is not hope. For what a man seeth, why doth he hope for? But if we hope for that we see not, then do we with patience wait for it? Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought. But the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. For he that searcheth the hearts knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit, because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God that we know that all things work together for the good of them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called, In whom he called, them he also justified. In whom he justified, them he also glorified. What shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? The word of God for the people of God. Thank you, Lord, for the word. Would you join your prayers with mine? Father God, thank you for the intercession. Thank you, O God, for filling in the gaps, O God, when we didn't exactly know what to say, how to say it, didn't want to say it. Thank you, O God, for the blessings, O Lord, that are indeed new every single day, O God. Thank you, Jesus, for stopping by our bedside on this morning, O God, and giving us a chance, O God, a new chance, Lord, to stand before you, your presence, O God, and just to say thank you, Jesus for protecting us. Thank you, Jesus, for loving us. Thank you, Jesus, for the ways you've made for us. Thank you, Jesus, for trying us again, oh God. We are in love with you, Lord, for everything that you've done in our lives, oh God, for you are indeed 
wonderful. You are indeed an amazing God. When we think about everything that you've done, everything that you are, oh God, we are left in a spirit of amazement that you do all of that, God, for us. Those who don't always worship you like we should, pray to you like we should, talk to you like we should, behave the way that we know that you would have us to behave, oh God, and yet you call us anyway. You love us anyway. And we love you for that, oh God, for not giving up on us, oh God, when everybody else walked away. So easy for them to leave, oh God, but you stayed. You continued, oh God, to hold on to our hands, oh God. We pray, oh God, for our communities, Lord, who continue, Lord, to unravel, to continue, oh God, to be affected by disease and violence, political oppression, oh God, Societal ills, O oh Lord, that run rampant, O oh God, through households, Lord. Burdening your people, O oh God. But your word says that all things, all things, O oh God, worked together for the good of them that love you, Lord. And we, in fact, love you, God. We pray, O oh God, that you continue to call other people, Lord, who are standing in this space of not knowing what they want to do, oh Lord, but they feel you tugging at their hearts, calling them to be a part of the fold, oh God. Bring them in. Help us, oh God, to be better Christians, better followers of your word, oh God. We pray for this country, Lord, that you would in fact have thine own way, oh God, and change hearts and minds to be obedient to your will. Do it now, God. And the things, oh God, that I have neglected to ask for, your word says that you will intercede for me. That you will intercede for us, oh God. Hear the spirit that dwells within us, oh Lord, to meet whatever need that we have asked or thought. For we trust you, oh God, and we know that it will indeed come to pass and those who love the Lord with a genuine heart say amen. Father God, we love you on today, oh God. We worship and adore you, God. And we just want to stop by and tell you that, oh God, we love you more. More than anything, oh God. More than anything, oh God. Father God, we worship and adore you. Just wanted to tell you that, oh God. That Lord, we do indeed love you. More than anything, oh God. More than anything in this world, oh God. More than what the world could give us, oh Lord. We love you on today. Mm. Just want to lift up a few announcements in your hearing. If you're still worshiping, please don't stop worshiping. Stay in that space as long as you need to. We 
because all of this really doesn't matter. Your praise and worship is what matters to God. That is what he wants to hear. So if you want to remain in that space, please feel free. If you are a member of Spotswood and you need assistance signing up for the COVID-19 vaccine, please contact your class leader. The class leader will help navigate you through the process, which indeed is an arduous process. So if you need help, your church family is here to be of assistance. In the near future, the church will be looking to partner with the city of New Britain to make Spotswood a location where people can come and get vaccinated. This, this is what the church right. is supposed to do. Right. Your church is supposed to be a pillar in the community to be a resource for members of this community. So we thank God for Pastor Blanks and for the members of Spotswood who are helping to put that initiative together. For truly being a church that loves God and loves people, amen? If you are not signed up for the church's email blast, please do so. That is where you will find all pertinent information and continue to be informed about what is happening throughout the week. Although we will be leaving Spotswood on this Sunday, we'll see you right back on Wednesday at 7 a.m. That is Bible study. Make sure you show up for Bible study. Please govern yourselves accordingly. Amen? Amen.
He's wonderful. Come on and give him praise. Come on, come on, type that in the chat and say, I know that's right. In fact, that his name shall be called Wonderful. Counselor, mighty God, Prince of Peace, Everlasting Father. So if you know him of being any of those things, you ought to just, right there in your home, you, if you're in the car, you pulled over by now, and just give God your best praise. You know, I'll never tell you how to praise him. But I will encourage you, let everything that has breath, everything that has breath, that has the Ruach, God, to bless his name. Shout unto the Lord with a voice of triumph. Come on, be thankful unto him. And bless his name. Come on, Zion, bless his name. Come on, bless his name. Come on, bless his name. Encourage somebody else. And let them know he's wonderful. Go on and text them. Text them right now and say, lift up your head. All ye gain and all be lifted up. Ye everlasting door. I'm the king of glory. Come on, put that orange juice down. Come on, put that toast down. Even whatever you're doing, come on, give him praise. Give him glory. I heard the preacher say, this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice. I will rejoice and be glad. I know if you are like me and everyone else in worship this morning are feeling as if what David said, our cup is running over. And I know that those of you who are worshiping us this morning feel that same spirit. Because truly, friends, you can't, you, you can't manipulate this stuff. Some people do. But, but, but when it's real, when your worship is for real, the only thing you want to do Hallelujah. is just be in his presence. And I don't know how you came to worship this morning, but by now you ought to feel better. Because if you can just get look beyond what you may be going through and just see God, in the middle of it, I promise you he's bigger than your problem. Oh, yes. Ah, so we press God today. Join me in prayer. Father in heaven, thank you. Thank you, God. Thank you, God, for this spirit of worship. Thank you, God, for the anointing that is flowing. But God, the truth of the matter is, is that we brought you with us. That's why, God, we can worship corporately. Because what we have done in the private, we're not ashamed nor to do it in the public. So, God, we pray this morning that you will bless us. Bless us, God. That you would send the word, God. We pray, God, that souls be saved. Lives be changed. Curses be reversed. God, I've studied, but I do need your strength. Yes, God. I promise, God, I've prepared, but I stand in need of your power. Can't do anything, God, unless the Holy Spirit comes. So, 
Holy Spirit, truth divine, dined upon this soul of mine. Word of God, inward light, wake my spirit, clear my sight. In Jesus' name we pray. And the living church said, amen, amen, amen. Why you, I want you to run with us to the book of Romans, Romans chapter 8. We thank God for the reading of God's word and Maybe you're just getting here with us in worship. So we in Romans chapter 8, um, kind of parking at verse 24 through 31. But I just want to grab one scripture to help make my case this morning. And that would be verse number 26 of Romans chapter 8. And um, I'll center there around verse number 26. I'll give you a minute to get there. So say here.
me by me by thy grace I hear you sign, raise your voice, oh, I'm calling, Savior, oh, bless his name, oh, Savior, why don't you God praise right there, friend. Come on, bless his name right there. And the good news is, is that he's in the neighborhood. And because he's in the neighborhood, and while he's pouring out and passing out blessings, can I tell you what I've learned, and I'm going to preach. If you can celebrate for somebody else, if you can praise God for somebody else. In the meantime, he'll make sure that whatever you need, that your needs will be provided. So I can't be mad and upset and jealous of what somebody else has. But I can celebrate God for them. Woo, come on, son. So when you say, Lord, don't pass me by. Can I tell you, he won't pass you by. But Lord, do not pass me by. Do not pass me by. Oh, wonderful Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Mm. Somebody asked me not long ago, they said, Pastor Blanks, why, why do you sing before you preach? I said, it calms my nerves. Yeah. <laughs> it calms me down. It gets me in a good place. Yeah. But you know, everybody ought to have a song to sing. And don't you ever feel bad if you ain't got a voice to do it. Just open up your mouth and, and just start singing. Because can I tell you, they were by the rivers of Babylon. And they says, how shall we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? And the good news is they said, listen, I'll just open up my mouth and just start to sing praises. Because I remember what he's done for me. And if he brought me through this, he can bring me through that. This is my story. This is my song. Praise and praise and praise and praise and Listen. Ah. Romans chapter 8. Yes, sir. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Name, Romans chapter 8. And, oh, yeah. uh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Mm. Yeah. Romans 8, Help verse 26. Us. All right. Mm, mm, mm. It says, likewise, likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities. For we know not what we should pray for yes. as we ought. 
but this is the shout, y'all. The Spirit, the Spirit itself maketh intercessions for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. I want to preach this morning from this thought, when you find it hard to pray. Preach uh -huh. yeah, 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 right When now. you find it hard to pray. Amen. We are starting um, this amazing journey here um, as a body of believers, um, revisiting some things. So last Wednesday night, we started with the war room. So we encourage you to join us this Wednesday night for um, the rest of the movie. And I really pray that we are all connecting back to prayer. Yeah. Yeah. And for those saints of God who never stopped praying, I hope that this is bringing you closer to God. Um, can I say this? And I know I can talk about me. In my Christian life, I found that prayer is a difficult discipline. Uh, you know, I, I concur with others that praying moves through different seasons. My posture may change. My prayers may change. But the fact of the matter is, but whatever season I'm currently facing, my prayers often are marked by experience. For example, if I'm doubting, I pray for faith. If I'm hurting, I pray for healing. If I'm confused, I pray for understanding. In fact, y'all, if I'm worried, I pray for calmness. If I'm restless, and, and I'm sure I'm preaching to some people who've been in a restless place, I pray for peace. Yeah, yeah. In fact, if I'm afraid, I pray for comfort. If I lack wisdom, I pray and ask God to give me the spirit of discernment. Yeah. And if this is true for you, I'm glad I got some company in worship this morning because you and I are on the same page because we are together in the difficult discipline of prayer. For I am no saint, y'all, when it comes to the fervency of prayer. Prayer takes effort and constant fine-tuning. Listen, we, we, we learn to pray. Even the disciples said, Lord, teach us how to pray. Uh, we learn what to say. And y'all, in the midst of this pandemic and the past four years of this Trump administration that finally came to an end with COVID-19 and sickness all around us, can't go out and visit and travel, can't even shake hands or hug friends and church family. There are times when I didn't feel like praying. Yeah, yeah. There are times when the Holy Spirit must help us in our weakness, y'all. For we do, know, we do not know what we should pray for as we ought to. But the shout about it this morning, but the Spirit itself makes intercessions for us with groanings, y'all, which cannot be uttered because I, I you know, I'll, I'll talk more about that in a few minutes because prayer is not a mood. Well. Ah, no, no. Prayer is our lifeline to all that is good and must be chosen above our feelings because sometimes we just have to fake it till we make it. Uh, you know, in fact, Paul Faulkner said it this way. He said it's easier to act our way into feelings than to feel our way into acting. In fact, my friend, there are times that we don't even feel like praying. Have you ever been there? You just don't even have the words to say. You're just, you're just tired. And uh, But the author, y'all, was once asked how he motivated himself to write. 
And he just replied, I just start writing. Uh, when the people began to rebuilding the wall of Jerusalem, it took them 52 days once they got started. In fact, Nehemiah 6 and 15 put it this way. He says, oftentimes, y'all, when we find it hard to pray, we just need to get it started. Yeah. Yeah. It's, 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 it goes like this. Just start talking to the Lord. Just start praying. I mean, don't worry about words. And that's the thing that some people uh, are concerned about. They're saying, Reverend, I don't know the words to say. Yeah, yeah. I don't have those, that big vocabulary. I don't, I, don't, I don't know how to put all those nice spins. That ain't praying. Well, praying, y'all, is just having a conversation with the Lord as you would do with somebody else. It's like, ah, having that relationship with God. You know, no, you don't even have to worry about your posture. You don't even have to worry about sounding good. Can I just tell you, just start praying. It's, it's difficult to pray because humbling ourselves, getting over ourselves, and coming to the end of our stubborn and sinful selves is hard. But when we pray, we die to ourselves. Can I tell you, and death hurts. That's why our flesh, y'all, fight so hard against prayer. Because when we pray, we are entering into a real warfare against our flesh and against the flaming arrows of our accuser, the devil, and his host. And although he, uh, they are not afraid of us, they are terrified of the one that is within us and who is for us. And they despise that we are praying, y'all, to the one who has crushed them and will destroy them because it is hard to pray but sometimes because our focus is too often on praying itself and not on God we learn about prayer not so that we might know a lot of facts about prayer y'all but so that we might pray with our focus on God because when we die to ourselves y'all our good news is uh, sometimes it's hard to pray whenever our focus is too often on us and not on God. Can I tell you this good news? Uh, we serve a sovereign God. Uh, we know he's not uh, hard to hear. and He listens when we pray. We, we know he's not silent, y'all. We know he's always answering our prayers and uh, always acts in accordance uh, with his perfect will for our lives, y'all. Because when we recognize God's sovereignty in prayer, we are also reminded of his love. We are reminded of his grace. We are reminded of his holiness. We are reminded of his righteousness. And we are therefore confronted with the harsh reality of our own wretched sin in the light of his glory and grace. Prayer is not a preparation for work. It is work. Prayer, y'all, is emotionally consuming. Prayer is physically consuming. You can be fatigued when we find it, y'all, difficult to pray. Satan wants to keep us from prayer, from prayer and its power. Can I tell you, there is power in prayer, and the devil knows that. And so no one is a firmer believer in the power of prayer than the devil himself. Not that he practices it, y'all, but he suffers from it. Did you hear what I said? He does not practice this prayer he suffers from prayer because Satan uses weapons of mass destruction y'all like phone calls or like text messages y'all or like social media platforms or our jobs or our busyness because when we find it difficult to pray our flesh is weak and we have difficulties suppressing physical tiredness and challenges that's why whenever you have you ever been there that you started off praying and before you know it you were asleep uh, because perhaps there are days when our mind grows tired we uh, are we're physically exhausted from work from from children and possibly from the weakness due to an illness and and and, and you know what i find that physical weaknesses is often connected to spiritual weaknesses though not always connected because when the body is weak 
Our minds can think wrong thoughts about God. And our hearts can begin to believe these thoughts. Because prayer time, y'all, can become ineffective because our minds are distracted and wonder to different things. And I know none of you this morning have ever had this issue, but I have caught myself falling asleep doing prayer. Like, like the discipline, like the disciples, y'all know them. It, 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 it's, it's like in these moments of lapse, I awake and find myself embarrassed, y'all, and troubled in spirit that I did not labor in prayer. You know why? You, you recall how Jesus went a little further to prayer and told the disciples to pray and keep watching. He came back and found the disciples sleep, and he said to them, what, what, what? You could not even stay up for one hour, so I pray, Lord, strengthen us in our our body and our minds and remember that even simple prayers y'all can be launching paths for effective fervent prayers to the Lord because sometimes we approach prayer with the wrong pattern we, we, we spend more time focusing on personal needs than addressing our father who is in heaven uh, can I tell you when you pray the Lord just don't want to hear your grocery list he don't always want to just hear what you want and what you need. He want to know when you talk to me, do you know who I am? Uh, so when you go to him, you got to go to him knowing that he is God who is glorified. You got to go to him knowing that he is God who is to be worshipped. Because when you follow a pattern for prayer, it's helpful and it keeps us from becoming distracted, y'all, by personal wish lists. Because patterns direct our thoughts back to God. For the disciples' prayer was difficult, disciplined. They needed refinement. They grasped their need to patterns of prayer. So they watched Jesus pray. The teacher provides them and us a helpful pattern and model a, 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 a model for them. Because if you take time to read through the Lord's Prayer in St. Matthew chapter 6, you'll notice how God is exalted. How sins are confessed. How needs are expressed. Let me share something here that just might challenge you. Some of my greatest prayers are in silence. Some of my greatest prayers are when the words never come out because the pain is too strong. Uh, listen, y'all, the heart can speak and God hears the prayers of a broken heart. I wish I had help in this morning. Uh, so listen, y'all, stop trying to numb the pain with temporary things. If it hurts to pray, uh, then be still for a moment. Turn off the volume, y'all. Be silent before the Lord and allow him to speak. In fact, the scripture put it like this. The Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silent before him. Just listen, if you find it difficult to pray, you got to concentrate on him. And allow the spirit to help you because the text says it's making intercessions for us. Sometimes all I can say is God, you know. And just cry help. And that's all I say. It's not about the length of your prayer. It's about the heart, y'all. God understands and he weeps with you. Come here, Lazarus. He has died and Jesus just stopped what he was doing and wept. Jesus identifies with our situations and he allow your heart to speak powerful words to God and allow him to pour out his love, y'all. Remember what the Apostle Paul said in our opening scripture, the spirit helps us in our weakness. Yeah. Wish I had somebody to help me preach this morning. He says, we do not know what we ought to pray for, but the spirit himself intercedes for us through wordless groans and he who searches our heart knows the mind of the spirit oh bless his name because the spirit intercedes for God's people in accordance to the will of God and somebody ought to say I know that's right that's how doors got opened that you didn't ask for Ah, that's how ways got made, y'all. Ah, that's how you sat and doing things that you're doing now because your heart was praying. Even when nothing was coming out of your mouth and the 
the spirit interceded on your behalf and went to God for us and the father in heaven provided for us because the spirit of the Lord Oh, bless his name. Uh, I got a few more things and I'm going to cut across the field. It's amazing, y'all. It's the gift of the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit does more than just make us feel good. The Holy Spirit is a powerful weapon. Because it's an internal beer. Ah, where when Jesus left, he says to the disciples, don't be just standing here gazing. He says, because the same way I go up, I'm going to come back down. But the good news is I'm going to send the Holy Spirit that he will then guide you and lead you. Listen, y'all, you can have any and everything, but you can't make it without your spirit. Listen, better than any technology or computer program, he clearly, y'all, communicates. That's the job of the Holy Spirit. Uh, communicates our thoughts and desires in harmony with the Father's purpose. I mean, the work of the, of the Spirit not only makes prayer work, that intercession also carries us uh, with our heart. I got to confess to you, y'all, I've been, I've been wrong over the years about prayer and other things. I, I've been mistakenly assumed that knowing how to pray is a skill that everyone should know hmm. automatically, but uh, it doesn't quite work that way. As someone constantly grappling with grace, I know that my prayer life is not something to be ashamed of but it reflects a weakness in character that needs to be strengthened. I wish I had somebody that would be real with me this morning. And you know, over the years, I've learned that there are a lot of ways to connect with God in a meaningful way. You know, I may not be the 21st century psalmist, but I can find, I, but, but I can pray faithfully and powerfully even with my disjointed and distracted train of thoughts at times. And if you feel like you don't know how to pray, listen, y'all, don't worry. It's never too late to learn because we believe in the power of God. And that is why we pray. So when we pray, we are reminded of who we are not. And we are reminded that we are not God. Because when we pray, we are reminded that we are not in control. And we are reminded that God is sovereign and in control. Listen, when we pray, we recognize that prayer is our daily and continual surrender of our perceived control over our lives to the one who has control of them and cares about them more than we do. Because when we really growing and, and, you know, when I was really growing as a Christian in my early 20s, I decided I wanted to be a prayer warrior. And someone who really knew God and saw lots of results from their prayers. And I wonder, is there anybody in this worship that can testify now? Like I, 33 years later, I feel like I'm finally learning how to pray. But here is what I've learned. When we find it difficult to pray, y'all, you got to keep praying. Yeah, yeah, yield not to temptation. For yielding is sin, y'all, because each victory will help you and some others to win. But you got to fight mindfully onward and dark passions subdue. And you got to look ever to Jesus and he will carry you through. So when you find it hard to pray, you got to shun evil companions. And you got to cause bad language to be disbanded. You got to hold God's name in reverence and don't please y'all don't take it in vain but when you're learning how to pray be thoughtful and honest and kind hearted and true you ought to look ever to Jesus and he will carry you through can I tell you if you're down on your knees it doesn't matter if you're laying in your bed it doesn't matter if you're walking the floor just keep on praying don't worry about the words that's coming out just start to pray yeah.
Abba Father. When you're in prayer, y'all, just recognize who he is. He is the one high, y'all. And lift it up. When you're learning how to pray, you got to do like this. You say, Our Father. You know that's who he is, right? When you can recognize that he is daddy. Yes, Lord. That's the first person that you got to acknowledge. Because if you don't acknowledge him in your prayer, and you acknowledge everybody else around him, he says, I will not have nobody else before me. So when you're praying, y'all know who your father is. He's just not a man, but he is the father who took nothing, y'all, and made something. He's the man, y'all, who went down in the garden. Y'all gonna help me in here. He spoke out of his mouth and made seas. He spoke out of his mouth and clapped his hands, y'all, and made thunder. Do you know who he is? This is who your father is. And you got to know where he resides at. He resides in heaven. That's where his throne is. You remember what happened there. His son, Jesus, said, Daddy, make me a body. And I'll go down and redeem mankind. Jesus gave up his seat so that he could come down to save our seat. And so Father who is in heaven is always looking down down and making and so when Jesus goes to Father he's telling Father about our knees and interceding on our behalf and that's the good news is so when you know where he is he is in heaven and he said hallowed be thy holy name can I tell you he's a holy God he's a holy God so when you go in his presence you gotta go in knowing that he's a holy God Isaiah put it this way he says I looked around and I saw seraphims and I saw cherubims they were all in his presence you know what the job of them was it was to fly around and snatch out demons to snatch out sin because they knew that nothing unholy could be in the presence of the Lord can I help somebody in worship when you're really serious about spending time with the Lord some things you gotta snatch out of the atmosphere before you get in prayer sometimes you got to say in Jesus name you gotta get out of here you gotta start decreeing and declaring have I got anybody in here that know that prayer is the key and our faith y'all unlocks the door but what I've learned is that some things may not happen huh, when you want it to it may not happen on Monday it may not happen on Tuesday but can you keep your hand in the Lord's hand and don't stop praying cause the Lord is nigh but guess what just ask him the Savior to help you comfort y'all strengthen and keep you he's willing I said he's willing to aid you and he will carry you through I feel myself going places that I probably should not go but I got to be honest our God always blows my mind because when I stop talking that means God is working and what I learned Monica in my time with the Lord is that I ain't got to always say it I can just be walking around y'all and just start praying have you ever seen God blow your mind you didn't even tell your best friend what you were praying about but you had a talk with the Lord and did not he turn things around I feel happy this morning thinking about power in prayer so when you don't feel like praying and you don't know how to pray just open up your mouth and pray like this Father I stretch my hands to thee no other help that I know if I withdraw that self from thee no other shall I go hallelujah 
hallelujah. So go on and lay hands on your own self. Go ahead and decree in the atmosphere and just start praying and just start praying. Father, it will get better. Father, the way will be open. Father, we will survive. Father, COVID-19 won't kill us. Father, I got a feeling, y'all, that if we really start praying, doors are open. If we really start praying, bodies will be healed. If we really start praying, God, Lord have mercy. God will show himself strong on our behalf. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven I'll hear the land, pray my friend, pray in the morning, pray in the noonday, pray late at night, because the more I pray, the better I feel, and while I'm praying, and while I'm praying, I might as well praise them for the door being open, while I'm praying, I might as well praise them. I'll bless the Lord. I'll bless the Lord at all times. His praise, his praise, his praise will be in my mouth. Say yeah, say yeah, say yeah. Ain't he all right? Ain't he all right? Ain't he all right? Do you know him this morning? Have you tried him? Have you tried him? Waymaker, miracle worker, problem keeper. Yeah, 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 yeah. Won't you call him one time? Mary's baby, the lily of the valley, the bright, the bright. Morning star, do you know him? Do you know him? Do you know him? Have you tried him? Ain't he worth it? Hey, 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 ain't he worth it? Hey, do you know him?
Father God, for what you have allowed to pour forth, O God. For what you have allowed your people to experience, O God. For what you have reminded us of, O God. Father God, we just stand in your presence, Lord. Holy Spirit, rest, rule, and abide, O oh God. I've learned that when the Holy Spirit is moving, you don't. When the Holy Spirit is speaking, you are silent. Jesus, thank you. Thank you, God, for hearing our prayers, O oh Lord. For reminding us, O oh God, that when we are tired, don't feel like praying are unsure of what to say, oh God. You're calling us to just start talking. Father God, hear your servants on this morning, oh Lord. We are not eloquent of speech. We don't always say the right things or say it the right way, oh God. But thank you, God, for reminding us that we don't have to be perfect, but we serve a perfect God. For your servant, oh God, that has poured into his people, I ask, O oh God, that you pour back into this vessel, O oh Lord. Fill him, O oh God, back up with the strength and the courage and the obedience, O oh God, that you have called us to, to do this work. I pray, O oh God, that the word that has gone forth has fallen on fertile ground. Ground that before today was confused. Weary, O oh God, had questions. Unsure of themselves, O oh God, and even unsure of you. I pray, O oh God, that you calm spirits. You make minds to be sound, O oh God that you give us the confidence that we need, O oh God, to trust you, to have faith, O oh God, and believe that there is nothing that is too big for you, nothing that is too hard for you. Give us the courage, O oh God, to pray, to pray without ceasing, God. Thank you, God, for picking us back up in those moments where we fell, oh God. For holding us, Lord, in your loving arms. When we felt like no one cared. For seeing, oh God. 
beyond our lack of confidence, Lord, in meeting us where we are, oh God. Thank you for being perfect. Thank you, God, for seeing our weaknesses. We thank you, God, and we give you glory because you alone are worthy. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Saints, I want to go ahead from there and just open the doors of the church virtually. If you are in worship today and you don't know about this Jesus who is available to you through the power of prayer, I want to invite you to get to know him on this Sunday or... Or if you're saying, preacher, I've, I've lost my way, but I'm ready to come back. I feel God tugging at my heart. Saints know that God is waiting for you. And you are welcome to come back in a right relationship with God. If that's you, go ahead and type that in the chat. Or if you're saying, I need to be a part of a church home that understands the power of prayer that can pray with me, pray for me encourage me love on me i promise you spotswood though is not a perfect church but we risk it all one day at a time to make jesus real and i promise you you will be filled in this place in this space that's you go ahead and type that in the chat if you're ready for a second family we would love to be that support system for you or if you just want to say, preacher, I just want to tell God, thank you for pushing me towards prayer. For I've seen wonderful things happen when I opened my mouth and talked to God. Or if you are in need of prayer, we've got you there too. Would you join your prayers with mine? Father God, maker of heaven and earth, the only wise God. The risen Savior, oh God, we come before you, oh Lord, thanking you, God, for what you have done. For what, oh God, you have allowed us to hear, oh God, for what you have allowed us to feel, oh God. For the transformation, oh God, that happens when we hear your word, oh God, speak to the depths of our souls, oh God. For reminding us, oh God, to pray when we don't feel like it, oh Lord. Reminding us that we don't have to be perfect at prayer, but we just have to open our mouths, oh God, and have a conversation with you. For you are indeed a friend to us, oh God. I pray, oh God, for the souls that have given their lives to you, oh God, on this Sunday. I pray, oh God, for the souls that have given their lives back to you, oh God. I expect wonderful things, oh God. For I know for myself, we all know, those who have a relationship with you know that amazing things start to happen when we are connected to the creator. We pray, oh God, for those who have joined churches on today, oh God. I pray, oh God, for the spirit of the church that can continue to meet the needs of this community that keeps you first and foremost, oh God. I thank you, Lord, that you are still in the blessing business, oh God, that you continue, Lord, to call us out of the murk and the mire of the world, oh God. I pray for those, oh God, that have lost the willingness, oh God, the passion to pray. I ask, God, that you reignite their spirit, oh Lord, Remind them, oh God, that you are just a prayer away. That there is nothing that you cannot do once they place it back into the hands of the master. I thank you, God, for the prayers of, that you've answered of your saints, oh God. The doors that you've opened, the blessings that you've uh, provided, oh God, the ways that you've made, oh Lord. For we truly know, oh God, what can happen when we invite you and have a conversation with you, O oh Lord? We pray, O oh God, 
that you will continue to meet each and every need, Lord. And in those moments where we can't pray, we ask that the Spirit continue to intercede for us, to make sense out of our groanings, O oh God. Do it now. In your name we do pray. Amen. Saints, hear these words as you leave this virtual space, but never the presence of God. Father God, we thank you, Lord, that as we leave this space, but never your presence, that you go out before us, O oh God. As we enter back into a world of hurt, harm, and danger, keep your hand upon us, O oh God. Guide us. Speak to us, O oh God, and minister to us, Lord. Be a lamp unto our feet, O oh God, a light unto our path, Lord. Help us, God, to continue to walk in your will and your way. We love you on today more than yesterday, God. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Go in peace.